So, so what's the story on him? Um, yeah, he just um, goes around these tournaments, you know. Uh, that's how he makes his living. Just go around these tournaments, wins, doesn't have a job, doesn't, doesn't go to school. I think the person who stood the, the, um, the hands of time as of right now is possibly Mewtwo King. Oh God, M2K. A superficially stereotypical, but then also very interesting person, especially in how it comes out in his play style. He still, after all of these years, is able to get, you know, top five if he stops getting emo and stuff like that, you know. He's, um... Interesting. Yeah. He's very interesting. Melee controller? <laughs> um, Dude, Brainerd, <laughs> oh, do you think you can make a quick announcement before? Uh, I, I need you to go somewhere else. <laughs> Alright. Um, Alright. All right. A bit weird, but I like him. I'm, I know Ken was ready to play him. He wouldn't admit it, and he would act like Meets King's below him. But he was damn scared to play Mewtwo King, I guarantee it. Everyone was scared to play Mewtwo King, because when he's on, you just don't understand how you can possibly beat this guy. Lord, when the fuck did this pasty white kid learn how to play basketball? Congratulations to PC Chris. He came in at the beginning of the season, stunned everyone by beating Ken. He outlasts everyone else. They took it off the pro circuit, which was really upsetting for us because that that's part of what creates the hype is being in this environment with hundreds and hundreds of video game players. MLG, they bought Smash Sports. They, they obviously believe in Smash as a competitive game and like part of it has to do with just um, Nintendo's a pretty reluctant company to work with. You know, through all the years of doing events, I've seen Microsoft and Sony, and they just understand that, like, competitive gaming's big, it, like, it means something for them, and they want to work with you. Like, you know, they've tried to help us along, or brought developers over. And Nintendo's kind of been very much the opposite, where they don't really embrace in competitive communities at all. Um, they're difficult to even get streaming rights. Like, we haven't even asked them for, like, TVs, money, anything, like just can we show this game that we believe in, that you created, stream it for our professional events, and they've been reluctant to even do that. They started 07 Circuit by having a little like grassroots event that they got a venue for. It was a nice venue and everything, but there was no hype. So that was kind of their, their transition was, we can't have you on the pro circuit anymore, but we'll try to help you guys out. So, which was nice of them, but like I said, it just wasn't the same as having it on the pro circuit. It was a really, really big difference. The chance for Smash to grow into something more, something mainstream and professional, seemed lost. In the wake of MLG's decision, the community pressed on, back into the underground world from which it had emerged. A lot of times one champion is replaced by another. Ken was replaced by PC Chris, Korean DJ, and Muji King all at the same time, which is kind of cool that it took three, three people to bring Ken down. It looked like the stage was set for me, Korean DJ, Yutu King, and just like anyone else who was hungry enough to get up there. The three players wrestled for dominance in Ken's absence. KDJ bested Mewtwo King at the MLG-sponsored Long Island event. Mewtwo King stopped KDJ at Cataclysm 3. In California, PC Chris defeated Mewtwo King at OC3, and Mewtwo King trounced PC at FC Diamond in Indiana. All three were, beyond question, the most fearsome players around, but the youngest of the trio seemed slightly different, a savant pursuing one thing above everything else, perfection. Unless you're frame perfect, 99 out of 100 times, you're not good enough. That, that's my mindset. That's what I tell myself. That's how I got good. He's so into frames, he's so into the tiny little details. Just thinking about the theories and logic and the steps. 
I'll do like up air and fast fall like the next frame so that I can hit them just barely, but they can't hit me. And if that, somehow the upper misses, I get a double jump in air and stuff like that. I did that at MLG. I just trained and trained and trained like up three hours a day for like two weeks. Everyone makes a joke that to be good, you have to like sit in your basement for hours on end over and over again until you finally have an understanding for the game. No one actually does it, except for me to King. Try to be as perfect as possible, and if there's some area that's not perfect, it's like, how can I make this a little better? Super Doodle Man and Mita King with their frame data on get up attacks, on moves being thrown out, uh, distances on wave dashes and wave lands. I spent like 2,000 hours on that shit, just double checking and triple checking just to make sure it was as absolutely accurate as I could possibly get it. He's very focused on whatever his objective is, and it can work for and against him a lot of the times. I beat Super Mario Bros. original on NES. I beat it when I was five. I, I made tons of like, Pixar art and stuff back then. That's, it's just something I started once, so it's like, I'm gonna make a big maze. And literally 90% of it, I do line by line, pixel by pixel. Uh, I, I don't know that he's ever ever confirmed you know, where he is on the autistic spectrum, whether he's got a little bit of Asperger's or not. I certainly don't want to make any judgments, but, but he's in that vein. He's in that Rain Man world. Muji King can, in fact, recite many, many, many digits of pi, enough so that you have to tell him to stop when he's doing it. Muji King lacks the ability to, to judge social clues. You get him in ridiculous situations sometimes. One time I lost my jacket at a tournament, and I went out to the lobby, and I found him sleeping in my jacket, and he didn't realize that it was weird. Weird. One time we were in a car together and we made a joke about like, just get out of the car. And he opened the door and tried to leave while we were driving. I mean, I think he would have done it if we hadn't pulled him back in. I mean, he's a complete nutcase. One time we, we went to a Massachusetts tournament and I'm almost positive he just didn't understand the concept of paying for something in a store. So he walked into like a gas station and just took like a Mountain Dew and left. And I was like, yeah, I'll just pay for that. <laughs> he might do things that offend people or things like that without knowing it, but he never means harm. There was definitely things he would do that would rub people the wrong way, especially at that point. People really, I think, dismissed him, if not outright disliked him, um, because he, he, I don't think he knew how to really express himself properly. But he wasn't good enough, and you got respect by being good. There was, like, kind of two different camps, people that didn't really understand Mewtwo King and then people that were like accepting and encouraging for him. And I think that kind of helps. He honestly, back then, all he cared about was Melee. It was all Smash. So like any relationship I had with him was only involved playing video games, unfortunately. When he first started playing, he had a very robotic style. He only played by himself for his computer, so he wasn't really exposed to like just normal like play styles. He was like a thinking opponent, like who adapts and like tries to like read you. He's not used to that, so he struggled at first in the community, like playing wise. He was, he was a scrub. He wasn't a natural by any means, but he had a work ethic at the time that was unmatched, and for most players, still is unmatched. It was uh. I think Melee FC's three or six. We actually found Mewtwo King three in the morning. He was still holding on to his controller, sleeping with it, and he was actually pressing the R and L buttons, like sleepwalking in his sleep. And we couldn't believe it. We thought, we like poked him. He didn't wake up. It's not like he was faking it. He was, he was dead asleep, but he was just still going at it. They all said I suck. And then I was like, well, I'll prove you wrong then. That just made me want to prove them wrong. At 05, Ken and Umbreon Mal, they both four stocked me. The next year, I beat Ken in a 3 to 5 set of Fox. The next year, I had three stocks in, in three different occasions in March of this. I'm a beast at Mark Dittos, and he raped me consistently. He had to fight Wes, raped him. He had to fight PC Chris, destruction. When I saw that Marth, I was like, he's gonna be the best player in the world. If I get a hit, I want to take it as far as possible. It works, you know, the best possible method. This is what you do in every scenario. The most fearsome player to know in a match. Came amazing. <laughs> uh, 
Unless I'm absolutely perfect, I'm not satisfied. I wasn't around personally to see Ken's reign. Everyone said, you know, it was crazy how much better he was than everyone, but I seen Mewtwo King's reign, and Mewtwo King was just so much better than everyone. He just destroyed everybody. It was just crazy. Mm. It was one, two, three, that's it. First stop, gone. I just rage quit. I said I couldn't do it. People are cleaning up after him. People remind him to bring his coat. They buy him food, they worship him. They usually wouldn't give him the time of the day. But now that he's, that he's a god of this game, people will do anything that he wants. The power that he holds by being so excellent, you have to respect it. I'm like proof that a nobody can become number one. In Melee, Mewtwo King was near perfect, but his obsession was for a game which, it seemed, would soon be made obsolete. There's one more title I guess I should mention that will turn that fight into an absolute brawl. I was excited. I mean, you play the game for so long, and you're like, you, you just want something. You want something new. Oh hell yeah! It was like the new game to play. This is going to be the death of melee. <laughs> so beautiful. And trust me. It's the best Smash Brothers ever, by far. We drove to this like distant GameStop outside of Philadelphia because it's the only one that was doing a midnight release. We were so hyped, new characters. Melee was so good, so fast, so exciting. You know, it's gonna be part two. We had the fest at my place, in my apartment. We had about four setups. We're playing it. And we're playing it. And we're playing it. It didn't wow me like right off the bat, and I was kind of worried about that. At least from a, at least from a, a more melee perspective. It was so so slow, not what we expected at all. We tried to make it fun, I guess, but after a while, after a few months, it became clear that like the engine was just designed to really, really reward defensive play. There's just like little room for like combos, like exciting match play, whereas it's more like just like who gets hit less. Everything that made Melee great, the combo system with hit stun, the various movement options, it had all been lost in translation. A lot of them, felt like Brawl was intentionally made to not be a competitive game, which is true. This is gonna be a direct shout out to Sakurai, but gaming got to where it is today because of its hardcore competitive audience that it was targeted towards 10 years ago. And I don't hate on the fact that we and other gaming companies are trying to increase and widen their audience. But at the same time, I feel like Nintendo this time pushed it too far and just, they like cut out their competitive audience. In Sakurai's interviews where he says like, he wants everyone to win, I cannot understand that mindset because Melee was so popular and still is because it had the duality of being able to be played as a party game and as a competitive game. I don't understand the reason for just eliminating half. <laughs> Nevertheless, people still developed a competitive game behind it. There is such a scene for Brawl still because of Melee, and because Melee was so competitive, people wanted to make Brawl just as competitive, and you can, just not, it's not pretty. <laughs> I'd say like summer of that year, not even too long after its release, that's when people, most people started to realize, at least people that had gone to Melee tournaments, that this is not a legit game for tournaments, so that's about when I stopped. Brawl cleaved the community in two and seemed to mark the end of the road for some of Melee's elite. I kind of got into Brawl for a little while, 
and that didn't last very long. <laughs> and I didn't look t- to Melee to go back. I just honestly thought I was going to quit there. I was just like, well, you know, like I had my moment in Melee. Like I had fun with it. Like I'll still play it, like with my friends, but like it's not going to be a big part of my life anymore. Towards my later years in college, it's, it was just incredibly difficult to have the same kind of lifestyle. When Brawl came out too, was really what set the nail for my hiatus. But for Mewtwo King, Brawl was a chance to keep going with competitive gaming and get a jump on the competition. So I just tried to get really ahead of the curve, so that way I could like make a lot of money and make a name for myself even more and just have fun, just everything. I have fun playing Manate because he's fast and I like combos. If he, if he, he feels like the only melee character. I just figured, tried to figure out everything really fast. Playing both Brawl and Melee at the same time competitively is very difficult because they're two different games. At some point in 08, I was actually like top number one in both games. After MLG, Melee found a temporary home in the lineup of Evolution, the premier fighting game tournament in the United States. The professional setting and first place prize brought a familiar face out of retirement for one last tournament. Third place was good enough for me. Like, I wanted to go out with a bang. I wanted, I wanted first place. I signed up for EVO and uh, I trained my ass off. For Mewtwo King, a focused Ken would be the man to beat at EVO. But before he could take him on, he found himself facing off against a melee newcomer and his stubborn Jigglypuff. I remember Hugs talking to me about like, I went to a California tournament and I was like, yo, who should I watch out for? And he's like, you don't know who he is, but you need to watch out for this guy, Mango. Like, he might not beat you, but he's getting good and he's improving so fast. And he's like, he, he's like, he's just sick with Jigglypuff, like better than anyone you've ever seen with Jigglypuff. And I'm like, wow. Usually when you ask something, they're like, oh, watch out for this guy, blah, blah, blah. Like he like went out of his way to ward me about Mango. So I was like, this guy must be legit. Well, when Mango came on the scene, I was already on my way out. I was already a little too old, and I was already not quite good enough, and blah, 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 blah. So I was able to view it kind of on the outside. He was a hurricane force, and when he beat Mutsu King, everyone said that it was a fluke, including myself. I thought, you know, it was it was the middle of the night, and he was on West Coast time, and you know, let's just jelly puff, please, that's not a real character, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I made a lot of excuses, and then Mango continued to win tournaments. What the fuck was that? Oh, no. oh. Mewtwo King is good at finding like the best options for a situation, which can lock him into a bad mindset of you know best option all the time. Mango knows Mewtwo King wants the best option, so he says, "You just do stupid things that aren't that shouldn't work." Basically, you approach him in weird. What he says is like, you know, you do weird stuff. He doesn't know what to do. He's not saying, "Okay, I'm going to wait for." you know, half a second, then run up and grab you, then up throw you. No, he says, I'm going to wait, and you're going to do this. You're going to roll because I'm forcing my will on you. It's a very it's a very typical West Coast player mentality. They're not really interested in dissecting the game so much as they are playing it and learning how to manipulate their opponent really well, or Mijia King is just figuring out how to abuse the game as hard as he can. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Robot, it's really good. His combos are amazing, but once you get in his head, it's downhill for me to King. Ladies and gentlemen, a Jigglypuff ditto. Go for checks and mango. Yeah! Let's go! Okay. 
Uh, so much of his Muti King's identity came from being a god at the game. So on comes Mango, his kryptonite. And when Mango beat him in those awful, horrendous, embarrassing Jigglypuff dittos, uh, I think it changed him forever. Um, at least in a smash way, if not in a real, real world kind of way. Uh, Muti King's not able to beat Mango anymore. It's like something broke in his brain and he forever has a mind block where he can't beat him. And it's a shame. And you see just the frustration in losing to him. He loses one match or two matches and that's it. He's done for the tournament. He can't bounce back from it. He's not like a Ken or a Chuda. He doesn't like the adversity. He doesn't like being cheered against. He doesn't like not understanding what's going on. And those things there, I really saw frustration and anger in him. It used to be everyone rooted for Muji King. And then by the end, people were rooting against him. And then to see him fall to Mango is very heartbreaking for me. It's very sad. I have like depression problems. Like. When, it, when, it, when, it, when I'm like not playing good that, uh, in a day or just feeling down for whatever reason, I just like, I just get depressed and then, it's, it's a really big problem I have. I just get depressed and then I just like don't feel like playing anymore. I don't know, I mean, I know it's a genre, but it's like, it's also, it's, it's also the truth. No one wants to win, it's like, I feel like I have no friends, I feel like, I feel like I'm the enemy. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just a big pussy, but I mean, what I, I think what, I say, what I'm saying is also true. <laughs> I, think, I actually think it's both. Even as we still decided to stick with the melee, not all of us did. Numbers were starting to wane. These events used to be like 40, 50 people in the tri-state region, you know, starting to dim down like 20. And you're really concerned, like, is, is this the end? Melee looked like it was on its death throes. And it was like, you know what, let's just do one more, you know, as a farewell. Okay. AKA yeah. Olive Card, ladies and gentlemen. Yo. That's the boy. Bright and early, man. Bright and early. Rob, right. I early. came a little late because, you know, I had the females here yeah. setting up. You know. Yeah, Bright the Olive females. Card, what time does team start? The team starts at uh, 12. Who's interested? And then it just it was a waterfall. TV, laptop, TV, laptop. You start hearing guys from the South, Hungry Box, Shiz. And then, you know, Mango, still at rivalry with Mewtwo King. You have this mix of all generations of the game. Guys like Korean DJ, Shootout, PC, teaming with Mango. Mewtwo King, he's the bridge between those generations. There was nothing like it. I went from studying these guys in the hub to being there, playing them in friendlies and asking them directly. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. At that point in my Smash career, I kind of had said, okay, I made out a bracket, I can leave this community behind. You know, I can go back to where I started, back to Street Fighter, Virtual Fighter. And then match four happened. I want to see the Falcon. This is the match you want Stay to Stay you son of a bitch. Without that set, I probably wouldn't be in this chair right now. All right, what stage are we thinking? so good. Is he going back to the stadium? Oh my Random. Goodness. Keeping him as Mark? I don't know. Shiz would be like a Carl Malone. Someone who was extremely solid, might not have won the big one, but people definitely know that name. And MTK at the time was kind of Jordan-esque. I don't know what the hell's happening. Why wouldn't he be? was the one that everyone was screaming for and wanted to see advance. I was a Falco main, and Shiz is just pushing the brink of anything I'd ever seen before. Damn, son. Oh, oh, that's no good shot. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> Yo, the Shiz was oh, real. Oh, 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 o
uh, I just remember my doubles partner, Can I Smash, is standing next to me, screaming his lungs out, saying, I don't care anymore, I'm raining Falco after this. <laughs> but like, a lot of times, he would defeat himself. If the crowd's not behind him, if he's being cheered against, if he suicides. Whoever the fuck said that the, the set in Florida was the best match ever, you were sadly mistaken. It's over. We're going to game five. Shiv just has this in control. I can dominate, I can take over the game at any point I choose to. You make one mistake, that's all it takes because I know how to get rid of you. If you pull victory from the jealous defeat, there's no other ways from saying it. Match 4 became the most watched of all time, and just like that, a community which seemed destined to fade away was revived, thanks in part to a robot. Yeah, he lost to Mango afterwards, but he was able to recover. Where most players just mentally would have been crushed. If I see, you know, Apex 2016 and he gets top three in Melee, top three in Brawl, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think that a lot of people would have gotten to know him, um, possibly because of the social barrier between him and other people. But I think he's made um, real friends that he's been able to hang out with and spend time with and, and make a connection with because he was good at the game, not because he played it, because he was good at it, because there was a difference. You know, he started hanging out with us, you know, we, like, we actually like, got him to drink. And like, I don't know, we just talk, like just to hang out and not play Smash, not talk about Smash. Over the years, I must say that, you know, he's changed for the better. He's always trying to help people with stuff. He had helped me with Melee. I mean, if you compare, if you talk to M2K now versus five years ago, he's way more personable, you know? He, he's definitely improved in that respect, so. I feel like the Smash community kind of helped him a little bit, you know, in terms of like, if he was playing an online game, he might still be the same, you know? Like, he might not have that communication, like when you're talking, developing real relationships, like, that definitely helps out. Like, he's met, he's gotten plenty of friends from Smash that helped him like kind of molded to the person he is now, the, the real Mewtwo kid. personally playing Hungry Box because you have to play a certain style. I got good using gimmicks. There's always been like that little rivalry between the two, and I think it comes down to Puff. Uh, he is gonna need to collect himself. Get some of the down air! Dark Dark game two. Two. How will I react if I win? And how will that feel like if I lose? 